On Friday, you know, February 5th, uh, there was an unlawful intrusion into the city of Oldsmar computer system at its water treatment plant. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Oldsmar, Florida. Oldsmar made world news when someone up and decided to hack our town's water supply. For a hacker tried to poison a Tampa Bay area water system. We begin at five with a still developing story in Oldsmar. FBI investigating after a hacker broke into the computer system of the municipal water supply. Who is behind the takeover? To spike the level of sodium hydroxide in the water by more than a hundred times. Water systems, like other public utility systems, are part of the nation's critical infrastructure and can be vulnerable targets when someone desires to adversely affect public safety. I'm pretty upset about it, along with my family and this entire community. We are pretty upset and want an answer and we want justice. Sodium hydroxide, by the way, is the main ingredient in drain cleaner. The vector of attack? Team viewer, allegedly. An employee was sitting at his desk monitoring the Old Tamar water treatment plant in Florida when his cursor started moving by itself. The facility uses Team Viewer to troubleshoot problems remotely, so he thought nothing of it. Until later that day when the same thing happened again. This time, though, the mouse autonomously went and increased the amount of sodium hydroxide in the water from 100 parts per million to 11,100 parts per million. That's more than a 100 fold increase. So officials say there was no chance this water would have actually made it in to people's homes. It's not known who the attacker was or the motive behind the attempted poisoning. 15,000 people live in a nearby town which would have been affected by this. Reuters is reporting the hacker got in via TeamViewer, though whether this was a vulnerability in TeamViewer itself is quite unlikely. What's more probable is that the credentials were somehow leaked, that or an insecure password was set. The treatment plant is now uninstalled TeamViewer, and an investigation is ongoing to figure out exactly who did this and why. Are hackers poisoning your water supply? No, but maybe? Scary? Absolutely. Cyber war or an advanced hack? Nope. As the evidence stands right now, this is the digital equivalent of the door being open and somebody wandering in and starting to fiddle with all the knobs and levers that were on display. How? Well, industrial control systems are rarely treated like the computer systems that they are. They're usually outside the security team's view, and these systems have been connected to the internet unknowingly or gradually over time. This will happen again as long as we treat cybersecurity as something that you do, as opposed to a core part of every system. This is not a sophisticated attempt by anybody. They might not even know what they're tweaking. <laughs> Just a little bit of sport, trying to see what they could get away with. I see. So you don't think it was like a, an attacker that was really trying to do any, any harm? You think it was maybe just kind of a prank or something? We don't really know who was behind the keyboard or what their motives were. Um, and I don't expect to be hearing anything much because the police are in an investigation, so they're not going to tell us any more than we really need to know. That's the unfortunate situation here. Uh, we're, we're operating largely in the dark. There are bits and pieces of information getting out that are not surprising but we're stuck between a rock and a hard place. We do want to prosecute whoever did this if they had any ill will, right. and we definitely want to go after them. So uh, we'll just have to sit tight and wait. We can afford to do that. In the land of IT and OT convergence, this SCADA system was sitting on the IT network. They're probably contracting the IT out. You go to medium to small water utilities, and that's usually what you see if they have any IT at all. So this is what you would call a converged system. And because it's converged, it means everything's in the same pile. And of course you put TeamViewer on your PC because, you know, I need people to remote in. So they can't afford all the other people that you'd normally have in a larger utility. So they have to have people able to remote in. If you guessed the password, you could do this attack. It's literally that easy. And they had the same password. They had only one account. It was in use everywhere. I would bet that TeamViewer was used because TeamViewer was what the city was using. If you've got an extra license for it, Run with it. I'm willing to bet the management didn't even know that this was a bad thing to have on the internet. They knew they probably would have taken extra steps because truthfully, the extra steps don't cost a whole lot. You know, if you think that the security was expensive, well, here's what happens when you don't secure. This ought to be a wake up call for a lot of water utilities because all the medium and small size water utilities have this problem. You said earlier that the state of Massachusetts had come out with some interesting 
information on this stuff. You know, it's funny. Uh, the feds didn't say very much, but the state of Massachusetts actually had some useful information. It said all computers used by water plant personnel were connected to the SCADA system and used the 32-bit version of Windows 7 operating system. Further, all computers shared the same password for remote access and appeared to be connected directly to the internet without any type of firewall protection installed. If that isn't a great big kick me sign, I don't know what is. And today there's people all over the world going looking around for uh, industrial control systems exposed to the internet. And I would bet you that if you found something right now, there's a good chance a lot of it would be a water utility. Some cities have very large water utilities. They, they serve so many million people that if it were to have a region-wide SCADA problem, it would be international news overnight and they wouldn't stop talking about it for quite some time. Larger utilities tend to have people on site in many places or close to these places and remote access isn't as critical for them as it is for a smaller utility that might need to seek help in a, in, in a hurry. The EPA says there are 145,000 public water systems in the United States of which 97% are small. Water utility failure, if one of them fails, it's, it's nasty, it's not fun, but believe it or not, it happens and you don't even hear much about it on the news. It's not quite the same equation as it is between water as it is in electric. Skilled attackers are expensive because even among software hacking and uh, the like, once you break in, what do you do? And the answer is you don't know unless you're an engineer who really knows the, the, the systems and how to break them. You're talking about a fairly expensive operation. You would only leverage that against a large water utility. That, and right. the only people that would really want to do that are probably nation states because there's no money in this. There's no right. money in destroying somebody else's utility. I mean, I guess there's ransomware, if, if, but ransomware works for just about everything. So that's probably why we haven't seen this problem more. You know, I've seen a lot of calls for updating our critical infrastructure as a nation. They don't see anything wrong with it because it works. And if it doesn't, if it's not broken, they're not going to fix it. That's the mentality of most water utilities and the infrastructure that they have is old. They don't really know what the hazards are and there's no legal mandate for them to follow along with software, so they don't. Guilty as charged, <laughs> but not, not for any other reason other than that was what the customer asked for, whether they realized it or not. The protocols that we have in place, the monitoring protocols, they work. That's the good news. Well, now that they've been embarrassed, they're probably going to get an upgrade. They're due for one, uh, if nothing else, to get them up to a current operating system and, and maybe a more current version of the application software. Most of what they needed to do has already been done. Their risk is a process risk, and they have done that well. The operator caught the problem quickly before it had any chance to even have an effect on the process and changed the number back. It doesn't get any better than that. I mean, what do you right. want them to do? <laughs> I call this a success story. Uh, obviously, they can, they can learn a few things from it, but it really isn't as ugly as people make it out to be. I mean, I know there's lots of keyboard warriors out there that are busy trying to, you know, make this into World War III. It's not. <laughs> it never was. It's right. just a, a very awake and aware operator doing his job. It's brought it to life for other other companies and, and industry in general. So I guess it's probably a good thing that it's just kind of a wake up call, like you said. There's much ahead in this one. There sure is. Just still in shock, really, of what transpired here in my hometown. It could have happened anywhere, and I'd still be this upset. But, you know, when it hits close to home, it's just a whole different experience. And hopefully they find who did it and may justice be served.